Uh, all right, Nick. Yeah, I wanted to ask you a question uh, going back to the Yoram Hazumani uh, debate that you did. Uh, he made an interesting comment. Uh, I think it was meant to you uh, both as a compliment or it's a, you know, it's, it was a two, two pronged, uh, a two pronged uh, thing where he called you Moses. And uh, so I, I guess he's trying to capture your idealism and maybe your naivety in terms of your views. What's your take on uh, why he called you Moses? He said you've never been called that. <laughs> I probably have never been called that. I think he was the first. Um, I, I, I think I'll, 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 I'll attribute uh, benevolence to it because I think I think maybe wrongly, but I think Yoram actually likes me. So I, I, I think he was trying to be benevolent. He viewed it as a compliment. Think about what Moses is to him. Moses is the most important figure in Jewish history. There is no, he is the liberator, the person who brought his people out of, out of slavery, brought them to freedom. Uh, uh, there's also a certain tragedy to Moses, right? Because uh, he doesn't ever see the promised land. He sees it from a distance, but actually never lives in the promised land because he violated, he did something God didn't like. So God penalized him for him so much for a benevolent God. Um, but uh, so I, I think it's the idealism. Uh, I think it's the, it, it, it's the trying to bring people out of wherever they are, right? It's the, it's the preachiness and, and the, 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 the trying to get people to see something they don't want to see. If you think about Moses, he is constantly during the 40 years in which the Jews wander the desert. If you've ever been to the Sinai, the idea of wandering that desert for 40 years would strike you as bizarre because it's so small. But, um, but uh, they wandered the desert for 40 years. And, uh, you know, he's constantly fighting with them. They're constantly complaining. They constantly don't like him. They constantly want something different. They can't, you know, they're bitching and complaining nonstop. This is a, a very ancient Jewish trait. And um, Moses, you know, is sometimes he gets impatient with them. And that's why God penalizes him one time when he gets impatient with them. Uh, but Moses has this, because of he's idealistic, has this immense patience with him. And I think, I think that's the sense in which um, uh, he views me as a Moses. I take it as a compliment. Uh, I, I think there is a sense in which, um, uh, you know, I, you know, you could view me as something of, of, uh, uh, I wish I was as successful as Moses. <laughs> Moses was much more successful than I am. I have a feeling that I will die not seeing the promised land from a distance, but die maybe knowing it's coming <sighs> in a few generations, but not actually seeing it. So I think Moses might be, uh, in a, you know, land up in a better situation than I was. And, um, I think Moses had a lot more subscribers than me. What, what a historical irony. <laughs> well, look, they, you know, they, 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 the, the Bible is full of really good stories. I mean, in this, I agree with Jordan Peterson. There's a lot of good stories that are interesting, that are open to interpretation. I mean, I even see Adam and Eve as a cool story because, I mean, maybe I'm repeating myself and people know this already, but like to me, Adam and Eve is a story of evolution, of human evolution. It is the story of human beings attaining free will and reason. I mean, the eating the, the, the apple is that evolutionary switch, that evolutionary thing that happened to us that allowed us to have reason and free will. And it's a cool story that illustrates that. And then, you know, it has some, it has some, and it's true. The consequence of having free will is now you can, you can, um, uh, you can introspect you can uh, you can project your your own suffering. You can uh, project your own misery. Uh, you can you understand that labor, for example, is hard. Labor is hard for every animal, not just for 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 human beings, right? Labor when giving birth, but but human beings know that it's hard in in a in a in a conceptual integrated sense that animals just, it's hard, you know, they, they, there's no optionality. They, they, they don't know anything different. So it, it, cognition creates challenges, not just good, but, but 
it, it creates certain difficulties. So there's a lot of truth to these stories and a lot of interest in the stories, both the ones that are historical and both the ones that are purely metaphorical. Um, it's just that most people interpret them wrongly, I think. Or, or don't interpret them wrongly because there is no right interpretation. They don't take the right lessons from them. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.